Welcome to Rocky Broad Solar, where we encourage you to make the current flow. On today's episode, we're going to compare two major AC coupled batteries, that be the Franklin A Power X and the Tesla Powerwall 2. Um, both of these have that AC coupled architecture, which means they are kind of inverter agnostic. They can pair up with an existing grid tied solar system to add battery backup at a later date or oftentimes they can be paired with a new system uh, such as a solar edge or, or in-phase system right off the bat just because uh, they may provide some um, good functionality that a solar edge or in-phase storage system cannot. The A-Power X is a lithium iron phosphate battery. Now that is kind of the, the newer technology. It's more reliable. It's less prone to thermal runaway. Um, and, and that's kind of where everybody's turning these days is lithium iron phosphate. Tesla Powerwall 2, they're still operating on the lithium cobalt nickel manganese, uh, otherwise known as lithium ion. And the reason why they've done that is because that is what's in electric vehicles. And EVs need a lightweight battery. And that is what the lithium cobalt nickel manganese, aka lithium ion batteries provide, is a, a lightweight battery. And so it makes them a good candidate for EVs. But with home batteries, that's not necessarily an issue. Yeah, the installer still has to carry the battery around and hang it on the wall, but you're not traveling with it long distances. Lithium iron phosphate is a superior battery. It's going to last longer. It's going to have a longer warranty. It's going to have many more cycles in its lifespan with less degradation. And again, less prone to thermal runaway. I personally don't think that's really a big issue. That's kind of like a selling point you can use per se, but honestly, you don't really hear about too many home batteries catching on fire. At least I haven't personally. If you have, let me know in the comments down below. So both of these batteries are a 13 and a half kilowatt hour uh, battery bank. Uh, Franklin being 13.6, Tesla being 13.5, potato, potato. The max continuous output current of the Franklin A Power X is 5,000 watts or five kilowatts. Again, Tesla Powerwall 2, same exact thing, five kilowatts. Now the peak output current here on the Franklin A Power X is 10,000 watts or 10 kilowatts. Now that is uh, that does exceed Tesla by 3,000 watts, and you know 3,000 watts is a lot of lot of juice when when you really need it. So that's not something to overlook. Franklin is uh, definitely superior as far as the peak output current, and that is basically the current needed to start large motors air conditioning, compressors, um, any kind of like a well pump, any kind of large inductive motor that has a peak current, a peak starting current. So the Franklin A Power X has a 12 year warranty and that compares to Tesla's 10 year warranty. So you get a couple extra years out of the Franklin A Power. Now you can stack up to 15 A powers in one system. And with Tesla, you can only stack 10. Now that's generally a non-issue because you know I've personally never even installed a 10 battery system. I think once you get above eight, um, it's about where you hit the max output of the A8X or the Tesla Gateway. And so um, you know, any batteries above that eight really just add battery capacity. They do not add uh, additional output power. So, you know, in other words, you're not going to be able to run higher loads. You're just going to have more fuel in the tank once you get above eight batteries in either system. If you're getting value out of today's content, do me a favor. Go down there in the corner of the screen on that little red and white icon. It says subscribe. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can be notified when I come out with more videos like this one. The MID, that's really where the Franklin A-Gate really starts to uh, separate from that Tesla gateway. So the Franklin A-Gate has a smart circuit modules up to two large double pole breakers, um, an 80 and a 50 amp max. 
where you can land those in the A gate. Things such as heating and air conditioning or a, um, you know, a water heater or something of that nature where you may want those loads in an outage, but if you drain your batteries down or if you really need to conserve your power, maybe you would shed those to save power for more important loads such as a fridge or freezer, lights, outlets, well pump, etc. Um, so you can program to th those to shut off immediately in an outage. You can program them to shut off at a certain depth of discharge. There's all kinds of functionality and you can go in your app and turn them back on at any point in time. Also, if the system gets overloaded and, and there's a, a, um, a system shutdown due to the batteries not being able to meet the home's loads, the system can come back on with those automatically shed so that doesn't repeat and continue to happen. So the non-backed up pass-through lugs, that's, that's really huge, um, which to most people that isn't a real big deal, but to someone who really knows their stuff, that is a big deal. Um, so by installing the MID or the gateways on, on, the, on the, the line side of all home loads, basically to where all of your home circuit breakers are downstream of the gateway, regardless of if they're backed up or not backed up. Um, that allows you to utilize the built-in CTs um, in, in the gateway to where there's no installer having to manually install CTs, which is a real high point of installer error when it comes to storage. And for those that don't know, the CTs mean everything. If an installer uh, makes a mistake installing your CTs, your two current transformers that monitor the power coming in and out from the grid, well, that can turn your system from offsetting your utility bill to just being worthless. And so the, the, the Franklin A-Gate really it has every single set of CTs is, is already factory installed and they have this 200 amp pass through. So no matter what, if you're on a 200 amp service, you can always put all loads downstream of the gateway. And so that just minimizes error and it, and it gives this system the ability to offset your utility bill for all loads on site if you decide to program the system to work that way. The Tesla Gateway, on the other hand, only has a 100 amp pass through. So in many of those scenarios where you only buy like maybe one Tesla Powerwall too, um, and you're just backing up a small sub panel of critical loads, well, a lot of times you have a large panel. You need to have larger than 100 amp panel for your non-backed up loads. And the Gateway is not able to do that, in which case you have to manually install a separate set of CTs on your service entrance conductors, which again has a high installer error rate, um, in order for the system to be able to offset the utility bill for the loads that are not being backed up. Now you could still utilize those factory installed CTs and not install external CTs, but again, the batteries, if you, if you bought the system to offset your utility bill, it will not be offsetting any loads that are not backed up and that's you know usually the loads that account for the large majority of your utility bill franklin a8x has those production cts built in and so that's what monitors the pv production or the solar power you're making test the gateway they have to be manually installed the franklin a8x integrates with any two wire start or utility sense generator. So um, essentially that's another line of defense. We're in a power outage, you don't have the grid, you have the A8X. If your batteries get drained down to zero or to a certain predetermined state of charge, you can have an integrated generator that comes on, charges up the batteries to full, generator cuts off, and then now you have a full battery bank to run off of, um, you know, for eternity. And so that's a really great thing to have. It's very efficient. If you're someone with a generator, that's the way to go. The Tesla Gateway, on the other hand, 
has no what generator integration whatsoever. So in that case, you run off the solar and batteries. If your battery goes dead, bam, your system starts working, generator kicks on, and it just runs for the remainder of the outage, burning up vast amounts of fossil fuels. Lastly, I'm going to revise this chart. There is some conflicting information online about the black start features, but um, the way I'm understanding it, these both have a black start feature. So essentially, um, both of these are AC coupled batteries. They kind of trick a grid tied inverter into thinking there's power from the grid by providing AC power to the grid tied inverter, tricking it into thinking the utility grid is up, that inverter produces power. Um, and then when it wants that inverter to shut off, it's going to frequency shift or use um, relays to, to turn off that PV when it's not needed. Now, in either case, these batteries need to save some amount of reserve power because they're AC coupled. So when you drain the power, the, the batteries down to, to say 10%, um, it needs to save that power. It needs to basically, it's going to shut down as if the power went out and you're on a dead battery because it needs to save a reserve amount for the following day when the sun comes up for that battery to, to, to provide fake grid power to the grid tight inverter signaling that inverter that hey the utility grid's on inverter wakes up it senses sunlight it starts making solar power and it recharges both of these batteries and um you know basically tesla says it saves 10 percent there's some people online saying it doesn't have a black start feature that franklin does have a black start feature from what i'm seeing they're both ac coupled batteries they both do the same thing they're saving reserve power for that, that instance I just described. But in any case, if either of these batteries was ever for some reason completely drained to zero in an outage with their design not to happen, but I guess in some circumstances that could potentially happen if you're in an extended utility outage, that AC coupled architecture can be a problem because you know you always need some reserve amount of batteries, uh, battery power left to kind of trick that grid tied inverter into coming back on and recharging the battery. So um, again, what I'm gonna say here is that yes, both the Franklin A-Gate and the Tesla Gateway have a black start feature. And the way I understand it, they're equal in that form. Everyone's got opinions and, and this is mine. There's really no good reason to choose a Tesla Powerwall 2 over a Franklin A Power X. Um, there's, there's really just no benefit whatsoever that I can come up with unless you're just someone that loves Tesla and you just want the Tesla emblem on your batteries and on your gateway to be in your garage there with all your Tesla vehicles. And hey, to each their own, the Tesla Powerwall 2 is still a great battery for a great price. It's been around the block. It's tried and true, um, but it's, it's essentially an older technology and Franklin has really outdone Tesla in regards to this comparison. As far as price, they're essentially the same price. I just priced out a three battery system for both of these systems and, and they came out within a few hundred dollars of each other as far as what I can offer at this current point in time. So if you're interested in getting a quote for solar or storage on your home for either the Franklin A Power X or the Tesla Powerwall 2, go down in the description below, click on that Rocky Broad solar intake form fill out a few questions about your specific scenario and I'll get back to you within a few days with a pressure free zero cost quote. If you're more of a do it yourselfer 
and you're looking for good solar products, um, go down in the description below, click on those affiliate links. Um, not only will it help to support the channel at no additional cost to you, but I am trying to negotiate some deals for my viewers at the time of this video. And so by the time you watch this, you may be able to get some deals by clicking on those affiliate links. They are some of the best solar providers that I've found for some really great costs. If you're getting value out of today's content, do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe, press that notification bell, leave a comment down in the description below. Hey, if there's something I missed about either of these situations and, and you've got experience or some information that I didn't cover, please leave some comments so my viewers can learn even more. Again, thanks so much to each and every one of you for watching. I really appreciate your time. Till next time, take care.